some formal introductions here in just a second, but we appreciate you taking time out of your busy evening. Uh, I know it's kind of right after school time here. Some of you may have rushed home to, to join us or you're getting dinner ready and all kinds of things, but um, we appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule to uh, learn a little bit more about the Lakehead experience and potentially start your Lakehead adventure with us next fall. Um, in terms of how this evening is going to work, uh, we do have a presentation and we have one of our faculty members from our criminology program here to uh, provide a little bit more detail and information around courses and, and program delivery. Um, we wanna make this session as interactive as possible. So if you do have questions throughout the evening, feel free to use the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen through Zoom. Um, that'll allow myself and Quinn, uh, our other recruitment officer, uh, just to moderate those questions as they come in, we can answer them live during the presentation. And we'll also do kind of like a formal Q&A at the end of the presentation as well. So keep the questions coming in. We're gonna cover uh, a few different topics and obviously specifically the CRIM program, um, but uh, we wanna hear from you and, and hear uh, uh, some of your questions. So feel free to ask away, no bad questions. Um, obviously we're all working remotely using Zoom as you are probably familiar with, with your virtual high school classes and uh, wherever your, your online learning is. Um, so we apologize in advance for any technical issues, um, any internet connection issues, anything crazy that may happen uh, this evening. Fingers crossed, we've been pretty good thus far, I think, this past couple of weeks, Quinn. But uh, just in case you hear any noises in the background, uh, my daughter crying, dogs barking, who knows. Um, we appreciate your patience during this time. And just so you know, uh, this session is being recorded as well, uh, just so we can have uh, some of our students who weren't able to attend tonight to get the information they need. So. Without further ado, let's get things started. Uh, officially, my name is Aaron, and I am a recruitment officer here at Lakehead University. Uh, my role at Lakehead is basically assisting prospective students uh, through the application process uh, to any of our campuses at Lakehead. I've been within the uh, recruitment and admissions department for close to 10 years now, and I do work out of our Lakehead Aurelia campus, which is where our criminology program is housed. Uh, so if you do have any questions about the program, application, residence, financial aid, uh, feel free to give me a shout after tonight, uh, and I'd be happy to book a one-on-one -on -one appointment with you uh, to give you a little bit more info about the program. So we've got my email on the screen there. We'll include it later on throughout the presentation, so don't worry if you miss it. And uh, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Quinn, to introduce himself as well. Thanks, Aaron. Hello everyone, my name is Quinn. I'm also a recruitment officer for Lakehead University. I am based out of Aurelia, though I did go to Lakehead and graduate uh, from the business program in Thunder Bay. So I've lived in both cities. Um, and it is so exciting to talk to you about our chronology program today. And I'll pass it on to Daniel Grimm. Thanks, Aaron. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm Dr. Danny Krupp. Uh, and uh, if I can, I'm going to just share my screen. I think we have to stop the other one first. Um, sorry, folks, just give me a sec here. All right. Hopefully, uh, Quinn, you can tell me, is this, is this looking the way it was supposed to? Excellent. Thanks. Uh, so welcome, everybody. Uh, as I said, my name is uh, Danny Krupp. I'm an assistant professor of criminology in the Department of Interdisciplinary Studies at Lakehead University. It's quite a mouthful. Um, I thought what I'd do is I'd take you through uh, the basics of criminology, what it is and how it works here at Lakehead. Uh, so the first thing we should do is get down to brass tacks and answer the question, what is criminology? Um, and you know, at the risk of stating the obvious, criminology is the study of crime, right? That's pretty straightforward. Uh, but more specifically, it's the study of lawmaking, law breaking, um, and law enforcement. So that includes criminal behavior, of course, but it also includes victims of crime and the criminal justice system. So laws, policing, the courts, all of that different kind of stuff. Um, and so it's actually a very, very broad area of research. Now, criminology is an academic discipline of its own, but it's actually a highly interdisciplinary one. Hence the fact that criminology is housed in the Department of Interdisciplinary Studies at Lakehead. Uh, so it combines work from sociology, psychology, economics, biology, political science, and more. My own background, even though I have a PhD in psychology, uh, my own background really it does mix all of those different things. Sociology, economics, biology especially um, are in there as well as political science to a certain extent. 
Uh, now, because criminology is, again, broadly a social science, it offers many of the same career options um, that you would find with sociology or psychology, or political science or economics. So a graduate of a criminology program often has many of the same skills and content knowledge as people from other social sciences. But there's also uh, many more specialized career paths that you can pursue with a criminology degree. And that includes a whole variety of things. I got a nice long list here. I'm not going to read them all out because it's too much, but probation and, and parole officer, police officer, cyber crime analyst, criminal profiler and forensic psychologist, social worker, social justice uh, or policy analyst, a data analyst, all those things. There's also the opportunities to work for um, you know, many of the other sort of the other side of the fence with the John Howard Society, the Elizabeth Fry Society, the YMCA, the you know, government positions, Statistics Canada. There's all sorts of different things um, that you could potentially do as a career outside of, you know, or with a criminology degree in hand. Now, the criminology program at Lakehead University is housed specifically at the Aurelia campus. That's really important for you to know. Um, while there are sometimes the opportunity to take criminology courses here or there from Thunder Bay, if you want to be a criminology major, you can only do that um, via the Aurelia campus. And so that's in Simcoe County, which is just north of Toronto, right? We're about an hour and a half north of Toronto near another city called Barrie. Um, so what can you expect from our program here at Lakehead? Well, first is there's an enormous amount of flexibility. Uh, at Lakehead, uh, there are many, many courses in the criminology program, and you can tailor them to your interests and goals. So um, some examples, again, a very long list that I'm not going to read out entirely. Of course, you'll be expected to take the intro courses, criminological theory and research methods. But beyond that, there's criminal law, race, ethnicity and crime, forensic psychology, policing, my own course or one of my own uh, favorite courses, evolution and violence. So that's my background. Um, so lots and lots and lots of options to a point where it looks like we may actually have more options than almost any other criminology program in Canada. Um, there's so many courses available to students here. And you'll have the option to major or to specialize or to minor in criminology when you come here. Um, and our program is a bit uh, more practitioner focused than some of the programs. And so there's a variety of courses that can help you uh, better understand the Canadian criminal justice system specifically. Um, there are also three different thematic areas of focus that run throughout our course offerings. So there's social justice and human rights, there's legal and uh, law and legal institutions, and there's forensic science and criminalistics. That's also a fairly unique thing from our program. Most criminology programs don't offer uh, forensic science or criminalistics options. Those are usually saved for chemistry, uh, sometimes anthropology or biology, but here we actually integrate them together. Um, on top of that, our classes at Lakehead are really small relative to those at other universities. And that means you have much better options to get to know your instructors. So first year courses at lots of universities and popular programs like CRIM and Psych, they tend to be hundreds and hundreds of students. Um, and then, you know, they shrink down from there, but they're still usually quite large. Whereas criminology here, um, we've actually changed the course cap so that they're really only, our biggest class is in the first year class is a 60 student class which is a much more manageable size. You can feel a lot more comfortable. And that's our biggest class, right? We get down to 40 for the most part in our second year courses and down even further to, you know, down to 20 and 15 even in the fourth year courses. So you have a lot more opportunities to get to know your instructors and to feel comfortable and get to know everybody in the program. Now, a small campus with small class sizes also means that you have more um, opportunities to get involved with faculty research if that interests you. Uh, Lakehead is one of the top schools in Canada for undergraduate research. And the criminology program is no exception to that. Um, so here's a sample of the kinds of things that uh, the Lakehead criminology faculty, such as myself and my colleagues, work on. So uh, surveillance is a topic that um, is being studied here. Much of the work that Dr. Deborah McKinnon, who's a recent hire in the department, um, much of the work that she does revolves around how, quote unquote, smart technologies that track user data um, are used to police people's behavior. Um, we also do work on body-worn cameras to a certain extent. Another area of research is police interviewing techniques. So some of the more recent work that uh, Dr. Devut Akcha has done, and he's our newest hire, um, concerns the effectiveness of police interview um, uh, techniques of witnesses and suspects. Uh, psychopathic personalities. So psychopaths like Paul Bernardo, they are manipulative. They show little regard for others. They don't feel remorse. And Dr. Beth Visser, who is a personality psychologist in our department, who is part in psychology and partly in CRIM, um, she conducts fascinating work on, on psych uh, psychopathy and psychopaths. 
And I've also done some work on psychopathy showing that psychopathic offenders are actually maybe surprisingly less likely to hurt their family members, their genealogical relatives, um, more than offenders who aren't psychopathic, um, which is you know, not something that a lot of people would have predicted, but, but we did. Um, I've also done some work on profiling serial killers and the effectiveness of that. And I think, as I mentioned, we have a whole course on criminal profiling. But my main research focus uses evolutionary theory to help us understand cooperation and conflict, why people get along and why they don't. And I'm interested in two forces in particular, kinship on the one hand and competition on the other. So with respect to kinship, I build theoretical models, they're mathematical models that make predictions about how people should treat others who are like them, physically and genetically similar to them. But then I also get to run experiments in the laboratory and online. Um, and in these, I manipulate facial, facial similarity. So we might have a participant that walks into the laboratory and we match them up with another picture of another participant from say previous years, who is of the same broad age, sex and ethnicity as our focal participant. And we delineate the faces with this custom software. We then create an intermediate template that say some proportion of the shape of the two different faces. So it might be 40% the participant's face and 60% the new face, the base face that the participant doesn't know. We warp the faces into that shape. We crop out things like clothing and hair so that were just really focused on the face. And then we might, if we wanted to apply color and texture of the participant to uh, the base face and create a new face, a morph or a transform that still looks a fair amount like the original base face, base face. But now if you compare them all, you can see that morph looks a little bit more like the participant as well. And we expose our participants to these faces to see how they interact with them. Do they cooperate with them more? Do they punish people who don't like them more, look like them more? Um, you know, do they prefer similar over dissimilar faces? Um, and often these experiments, you know, in, involve tasks for money and things like that, which is really cool. The other area, competition that I study, um, I'm interested in both the amount of competition that people face. So that could be measured by something like inequality and who they're competing with. And so again, I build theoretical models, mathematical models to help me make predictions. And then I test those predictions with experiments in the lab and online. People will play games, quote unquote, um, in which they are paid money based on their decisions and the decisions of the other individuals they're interacting with in these tasks. Um, and that way I can see whether or not the models that I'm building make sense. Do they actually hold water? So I know I've gone really quickly. Um, if you're interested in learning more about my work, you can just check out my lab's website. That's saltlab.org. Um, and you can also follow us on Twitter. Uh, we don't tweet that often through the lab, but uh, basically when there's something new to share, we do. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I'm gonna turn things back to Aaron. Great, thanks, uh, Dr. Kraft. I'm just gonna reshare my screen here. There we go. Um, so some great information, some good starting points on the program and definitely some good insights on uh, research opportunities as well, which is uh, always something we talk about with students. It's um, sometimes a little bit hard to, to grasp as like a high school student. I know for me, thinking about undergrad research, um, I wasn't really sure kind of what it was or how it works, but there's some unique opportunities to, like you said, kind of maybe work with your faculty members, work with professors in your program on some really interesting topics and kind of build those skills um, whether you're looking to get into the workforce or maybe continue on with your own um, uh, graduate studies or, or research in, in the field, which is uh, just cool. Um, we haven't had any questions come in through the chat or Q&A yet, and it always takes one question to kind of break the ice. So um, I'm going to maybe ask you a, a question, Dr. Krupp, in a, in a sec, but I just want to uh, mention again to the attendees, if you do have questions, feel free to drop those in the Q&A or the chat. And uh, Quinn and I can uh, help moderate those and, and uh, we can learn a little bit more about the program. So don't be scared, no bad questions. Uh, we do have some more slides here in a sec and, uh, and we've got a little bit more time to kind of think of some uh, questions that come in. So maybe kind of getting back to the starting point, uh, Dr. Krupp, in terms of the criminology program, as well as maybe the interdisciplinary studies program where you can do a uh, specialization in criminology. Can you maybe talk about the difference between the two and just like the length of the programs, just kind of the, the basics in terms of a high school student applying and looking to study criminology. 
Yeah, absolutely. So the interdisciplinary studies program uh, or the, the department, sorry, offers three different um, broad programs. There's the interdisciplinary studies program itself, there's criminology, and then there's also a um, media film and communications program. Um, and students are, of course, welcome to take courses in those. Even if you're in a different department, you often have the opportunity to take some of those courses as electives and things like that too, which is cool. But if you wanted to do uh, criminology as you know a major or a minor, um, there's basically a set of, of sort of what you might call rules, right? About which courses you have to take for the major versus the minor and how many other criminology courses you get to take or you're expected to take of which you have a lot more choice from, right? So there's you know a few courses you absolutely have to take if you wanna do a major. You have to have intro to criminology and intro to criminalistics in the first year. You have to have criminological theory and criminological research methods in the second year. Um, but then after that, you have an enormous amount of flexibility about the other criminology courses you wanna take um, so long as you meet these kinds of requirements in the plan. For a minor, you have to take a bunch of these courses as well. And then you know they don't expect you to take quite as many crim courses because if you're minoring in one, you're probably majoring in something else, right? So say uh, sociology or something like that. And under those circumstances, you take those kinds of courses. So um, flexibility is the name of the game. There's a lot of different opportunities for students to try different things. Uh, the other thing I'll point out, just in case there's any students that are coming from college that might be in, in this room, I don't know if that's the case, but if that is the case, we do have a transfer program and we're setting more up with other colleges um, that allows you to get certain amount of credits when you come in, meaning that you don't necessarily have to do all of, if you've already done those courses or equivalent courses at your college, you may not have to do the same ones again when you come here. Um, so the program would be a little bit shorter for you. Yeah, that's a really, uh, really good point. We uh, have a lot of students from Georgian College, which is uh, obviously local in Aurelia as well. Um, and a lot of students from the police foundations program or law and security type programs as well in some right. cases. They're interested in, like you said, continuing on after their diploma and, and doing the criminology degree. So, um, yeah, it's a, a nice one. And we, we have, a, a, I believe, a, t a new uh, basically two plus two transfer pathway with Georgian College where you can do your Georgian College Police Foundation's diploma in two years. And then you transfer into Lakehead and uh, can do our criminology program in an additional basically two years to finish. So it's a, a good option for those students coming in from college for sure. Exactly. Um, in terms of kind of courses and maybe, I know you touched on kind of career options uh, as well. Um, I know in the last couple of years, um, we've had a lot more students looking at criminology with, you know, the influx of, you know, uh, how to make a murderer and all those, you know, crazy Netflix shows that are popping yep. up every week, it seems. Um, there's lots of interesting kind of content out there. So there's a lot more interest for criminology just as a program. Um, where are you finding students are kind of, you know, interested, maybe kind of course wise within the program and, and where do you find kind of students are maybe um, looking to get into job wise afterwards or, or what are some opportunities I should say? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, as far as interest goes, we, we don't really have any courses in criminology that are um, undersubscribed, meaning that students really seem to like all of the courses that we're offering. It's just that different students want different things, right? So some students are a bit more law focused. Some students are maybe a bit more victims focused. Some students are more, you know, enforcement focused, right? And so we offer different courses about that. So we have a course on policing for students who are interested in policing or enforcement of some kind or another, it makes sense for them to go down that road. Um, we have a field exposure course, which is really cool. So um, we actually bring people in from different areas of criminology, like, like applications of criminology, whether that's police um, and border security, or maybe another you know, um, um, academic or, or youth justice or social work, we bring people in like every week to discuss career options that you, you know, and career pathways um, as a function of you know, the, the area that you've been trained in. Um, so you know, every, every course is a little bit different, not just because of the instructor, but because of the topic and because of the expectations of it, right? So I teach a fourth year research course, for instance, and that's really only for the students who want to go on, say, and do a master's and a PhD. Um, and you know, students who are not really interested in that, it's, they, that's fine. They take other courses instead, right? So um, again, you know, we keep coming back to this, this same statement about flexibility, but um, 
it really is like, obviously there are some jobs that a criminology degree is not gonna help you with. Probably being a book editor, a criminology you know, degree is not gonna do a lot for that, right? But for anything that you can think of that might be related to um, crime and misbehavior, or enforcement or the law or anything like that, a, a law degree. Um, criminology is a really natural place to start. And then just basic things like working with data. You know, There's all sorts of data jobs out there now um, and criminology students are often trained with that kind of background. Um, for some of these things, you'd expect to have to get another degree after that, but that's not spe specific to criminology. That's, you know, if you, if you did a psych degree and wanted to become you know, a clinical psychologist, you'd still be expected to do graduate work in psychology, right? You can't just do an undergrad and suddenly go in. But the nice thing about criminology is that lots and lots of jobs really only require the undergraduate crim degree. And then, you know, training will come after that. So you want to be a police officer, you do an undergrad, you know, in criminology, say you get accepted into a you know, police service and you get trained there. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, those are all really, really good points. And I think, uh, again, you hit on the, the flexibility part. I know that's what a lot of the students that I speak to in high schools really um, kind of like about the program is you have a wide range of criminology courses a lot, uh, across a lot of different kind of areas, but then you also have the ability to knock in some of those psychology or sociology courses and, and others exactly. in the faculty of social science and um yeah the jobs are, are kind of everywhere right and uh yeah i know a lot of the a lot of the local students that are from the aurelia Barry area that know about it um the opp headquarters is in aurelia so um positions kind of in that data analysis field um, i have a good friend of mine that i played soccer with that uh, works in hr at the opp headquarters and he said there's just tons of positions uh, doing data analysis and and uh, a lot of the uh, career opportunities that you mentioned. So if you're looking in for uh, a job in obviously law and criminology and policing, there's some really good opportunities locally, but there's lots kind of across the uh, province as well. Yeah, and I actually should add, you know, going back to your question before, that every year we have students, you know, who tell me about interviews they've got now with a police service or with the OPP or the RCMP for that matter. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, asking for asking for letters of recommendation, which I'll remind students, you know, because it's a small campus and small classes, you get to know us better. It's much easier for us to write a real sort of tailored um, letter of recommendation for a student than it is at a much bigger university. Um, and so that gives you a lot, you know, a lot more opportunities for to get a step ahead for a job. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. The, um... The smaller like classroom, smaller campus experience is why most students end up coming to, to Lakehead, mm -hmm. but especially Lakehead Aurelia with the smaller campus. We have 1,500 students there roughly. So it's definitely unique that way. And uh, like you said at the start, CRIM's a, a very popular program at a lot of Ontario universities. So if you're going somewhere else, likelihood is your classes are going to be double, maybe triple the size of what we have yeah. at Lakehead Aurelia. I think exactly. having a, a 60 person first year intro to, to CRIM course is pretty pretty unique so that's got some advantages yeah. for sure cool. um one other uh question i had kind of around the the program and i get asked this by high school students as well is the interdisciplinary studies and criminology programs uh, are both an honors bachelor of arts and science degree right um can you maybe touch on um this <laughs> why we have the arts and science or maybe how that works because some students think they're going to be taking physics or you know first year chemistry or something wild uh they're more on the arts uh, side of the spectrum so if you can maybe yeah. explain that portion that would be uh, helpful absolutely so you know and, and just to reassure people you know my as i said before my background is in psychology and while i took you know the occasional course in what you might consider like the pure applied sciences so i have a biology background as well um that was my choice you know more than anything else and that's true here as well um, so the, the courses that we have that you'd be absolutely expected to take that are, are more on the um, pure and applied science sort of background are things like the criminalistics courses, um, you know, the forensic science courses. And that's a first year course really is the only one that I believe you're, you're expected to take if you want to major in it um, in criminology. So students if, if it's a first year course, it's meant to be the kind of course that students should be able to get through, right? It's not like a super challenging, it's gonna be work, obviously, any 
university um, course should be some work, right? But um, whether you agree or not, it, it you know, it ought to be. Um, and uh, so our, our program is not, there's no expectation that you have chemistry courses and physics courses and uh, even biology courses, but you're, you're, you are also welcome to take them as electives if they interest you, right? My background, I said, is psych many times now, but um, I, you know, I took physics in Sejep, so I'm from Quebec. We have a slightly different system there. So I, you know, I came from a background of physics. Um, I'm really interested in economics. I think there's really cool stuff to be done there and the interface with criminology. Um, and like I said, my real strongest background besides psych is biology. Um, but these were all courses I wanted to take. They were pretty much none of them were things that I was expected to. Um, and so, you know, the students in, in both of those streams, the IS and, and the um, inter interdisciplinary studies and, and the crim courses, it's really about just giving you options. So criminology is a social science, which means that there are certain, you know, approaches that we take that are different from the humanities. Um, but that doesn't mean, yeah, that you're going to be playing with beakers and test tubes or, you know, having to do a lot of math. Um, down the line, we will be introducing more stats oriented courses. Uh, they don't, we don't have them yet. So anybody who's in this room right now probably doesn't have to worry about them. But when we do introduce them, the way that we're going to do that is by choice as well. It's not going to be the sort of thing that you'll be obligated to take. We'll encourage it, obviously, because we think it's important. Otherwise, we wouldn't be adding it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, you should not walk in the door at Lakehead thinking it's going to be uh, certainly not a harder experience when it comes to the science element of things than in any other institution. Um, I would say we probably balance it pretty similarly to a lot of other schools on that front where, again, you know, what really makes us different from that side of things is the offering of forensic science and criminalistic courses, which frankly is one of the biggest reasons students are excited to take CRIM. And at most other schools, they don't get the option. Here, you know, you take CRIM and you get to understand a little bit more about what CSI is all about, right? Um, whereas most other schools, you take CRIM and you don't have access to any courses like that. Yeah, can you maybe um, just uh, build a little bit on the, the forensic side? Because that's like, it, it just kind of popped into my head, but that's definitely something we get asked about a lot in the admissions mm -hmm. and recruitment office. Students have the whole CSI factor. They're, they're interested in forensic sciences and you know, crime scene investigation and that kind of thing. Right. Um, what are, you know, how, can you just build on that maybe a little bit as uh, what students can take? Yeah, that? absolutely. So, you know, like I mentioned before, that's the sort of thing where you don't graduate an undergraduate degree, you know, having taken a few courses in uh, forensic science, criminalistics, and suddenly you're, you know, a practitioner, right? And um, there's, there's further training after that, but that, that's true anywhere. Um, but what again sets us um, apart is that we actually offer those courses in the CRIM program. Um, and that's really very different from most other schools. Um, students will, and this is not just forensic science, this is true of psychology, this is true of criminology in general. Students often walk in the door with certain beliefs about, okay, I'm gonna take intro psych and I'm gonna be able to read people's minds. And I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna take forensic science or criminalistics and I'm gonna, you know, be able to see what, you know, understand what they're doing on CSI. Uh, to be honest, right, a lot of the things that happen on CSI, they don't exist, right? There's there's the joke, for instance, about enhance, right? So you see a picture and they're like, can you enhance that and enhance that? And that's not, that's not you know, how things actually work, right? Um, so you can, you can airbrush things and you can make them look prettier, but you don't actually get more detail than however many pixels your picture is actually going to give you. Um, but what I think is really exciting about it is it, 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 it makes you a... Um, better able to, to understand and critique what's going on in those shows and in the real world. But also if that's the sort of thing that actually excites you is the day-to-day, -day, you know, how do we actually compile evidence to decide like when someone is a, a genuine suspect, um, you know, and determine whether or not there's like probable cause here and things like that, um, that requires like some really serious skills. Um, and we offer classes on that, which again, you don't really find at most universities. Um, so if that is the sort of thing that you're interested in, which I think is great, we're not going to crush that out of you. Like if if you want to, if CSI excited you, and I'm telling you now, CSI is not very realistic, I promise you, you'll still leave these courses going, but there's a lot of cool stuff we can do, um, a lot of cool techniques, and, and, you know, that we have third and fourth year level courses that allow you to get a little bit more close to those kinds of things. Um, we have a course on death investigations, right? Like, 
that's not something that you'll usually find at other institutions. Um, but we have experts here who are, you know, who are teaching those areas. So it's really cool. That's awesome. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Dan. Oh, yeah. That's you're getting me uh, pumped up here. I gotta go back to school and take <laughs> take some grim <laughs> courses, some forensic courses, because I'm hard into the uh, forensics and uh, and all the uh, the shows on Netflix these days. That's awesome. yeah. It's pretty neat. Good foundation. Cool. Well, we um, have uh, haven't had any questions in the last couple minutes here, so I think. Um, that's a good uh, foundation for now, and we'll kind of keep things rolling just as we wrap up. But um, I encourage students to drop some more questions in the Q&A or the chat, uh, just so we can uh, give Dr. Krupp a few hard-hitting questions here before we wrap up. But uh, we appreciate you uh, giving lots of great information there about the CRIM program. So uh, thanks for that. You bet. So just uh, in terms of like a little more information about Lakehead just in general. Um, for those of you that are maybe kind of just starting your research, just trying to kind of figure things out. Um, as we've talked about here tonight, Lakehead is a smaller university in Ontario. Um, we've got a few facts on the screen there for you and we've been ranked in the top 10 for primarily undergraduate universities in all of Canada this past year by McLean's Magazine. Uh, and as Dr. Krupp mentioned, undergraduate research is a large focus uh, at Lakehead across all, all of our campuses, but there's some great things happening within the criminology program specifically. Uh, this past year, we were ranked number two uh, for undergraduate university or undergraduate research universities in all of Canada by Research Info Source. And the previous five years, we were actually ranked number one. So it's definitely, uh, like we said, a, a large opportunity and, and a big part of the Lakehead experience for both faculty and students. Um, small classroom experience I know we've touched on, so 90% of our classes have fewer than 60 students, and as Dr. Krupp mentioned, 60 would be probably your largest class for some of those first year intro to criminology courses. So a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of interaction with the professors, students in your classroom, and it's really more of a kind of a laid-back learning environment, which a lot of our students love. Um, financial aid is a really big part of the Lakehead experience. So there's some great opportunities for you to get scholarships, awards, and bursaries as a Lakehead student. We were at number one in Ontario this past year for scholarships awarded. And we gave out $11 million in scholarships, awards, and bursaries to students. Now, just to give you a bit of perspective on that, uh, we only have about uh, under 9,000 total students between our two campuses at the undergraduate level. So $11 million divided by 9,000 students, that's a lot of funding per student, as long as you're applying for it. So there's some really good opportunities. Uh, for those of you coming direct from high school, we have an automatic entrance scholarship. For those of you with an 80% average or higher coming direct from high school, uh, and that scholarship is renewable for all four years of your criminology uh, degree. Uh, and we're the only university in Canada that has a free tuition renewable entrance scholarship. So keep working away on those marks. The higher your average this year, the more scholarship opportunities you'll have. And Quinn and I can always give you some more information uh, about that uh, after this evening or, or in the Q&A portion. Um, we do have over 65 degree programs at Lakehead. So even though we're a smaller school, we are fully comprehensive. And uh, again, like we've been talking about earlier, the programs that we offer like criminology are very flexible. So they allow you to really explore, kind of pursue your passion and mix and match courses from a variety of different subject areas. So um, some good flexibility there. If you're kind of unsure what you wanna do with CRIM or where you wanna go, um, Dr. Krupp and our faculty can kind of guide you along the way and you can kind of explore with a, a wide range of courses, which is great. And I'm sure there's some uh, parents on the webinar tonight and employment and careers is always the uh, top question that I get from them usually. Um, the employment rate at Lakehead for all of our programs is 97.7% uh, within the first two years of graduation. So uh, that's above the provincial average for Ontario universities. And uh, I think it just kind of speaks to our uh, hands-on programming. Uh, again, that one-on-one -on -one support students will get, kind of setting them up for success after graduation. Uh, and we've got some unique programs like the CRIM uh, program as well, which is uh, a good opportunity. So in terms of kind of next steps, as we finish up here, some, uh, some things to kind of keep in mind. Applications are open and uh, you would apply directly through the Ontario University Application Center or OUAC website. For those of you applying from high school, you would use the 101 application. 
And for those of you applying from college or university, you would use the 105 application. Um, a few deadlines and important dates on the screen there, but the main one to keep in mind is just January 13th, which is the deadline to apply for all high school applicants. So I usually recommend students apply before Christmas time. Uh, that gives you a few weeks after Christmas if you need to make any program changes or campus changes or anything crazy, um, but you have until January 13th to apply for any Ontario uh, university. And something we, I think we may have missed earlier is just the admissions requirements for the criminology program. And for that, uh, we're looking for six grade 12 U or M level courses. And the only prerequisite course for the criminology program is grade 12 U English or ENG for U. So keep that in mind, even though it's an arts and science degree, as we talked about, um, there's no math or science prerequisite courses for admissions, just the grade 12 U. Uh, and it's a minimum 70 overall average based on your top six grade 12 U or M courses. So uh, I'll maybe get Quinn to drop the criminology webpage in the chat, uh, just so you can take a little bit more info and look at admissions and, uh, and maybe connect with our faculty as well. Um, we'd love to have you on campus for a campus tour. Um, big part of the decision-making process is actually seeing the campus environment, checking out the city. So for those of you that aren't from Aurelia and want to maybe come visit us, and even those that are locals and maybe haven't been to the campus yet, um, we just opened up our in-person campus tour program, which has been on pause as a result of the pandemic. Um, if you're interested in booking a campus tour, visit our website, which is on the screen there. Uh, there are some protocols, obviously, around um, vaccine passports and social distancing and everything else. Uh, so feel free to visit our campus tour website to book a future date. Um, they are limited in terms of uh, dates offered, but we do hope to offer more uh, coming up into the new year as well. And it's a great opportunity to get comfortable, see what campus is like, check out residents, check out some of our lab and, and classroom spaces and see if it's the right fit for you. We do have our Lakehead virtual open house coming up on December 8th. Um, so if you'd like to connect maybe with Dr. Krupp, and I think you're there, <laughs> and uh, some of our other faculty from our criminology program, um, that's a good opportunity to do so as well. We'll have some current students at our virtual open house. We'll have different presentations and uh, student panels going on throughout the day. Uh, and it's a good opportunity to learn a little bit more about the program if you need to. Um, we do daily webinars, uh, Monday to Thursday, uh, every week. So if you do want to connect with us again, um, we've got some sessions specifically for parents, uh, financial aid, got some general information sessions as well. So feel free to stay connected, check out our upcoming events page for some of our upcoming webinars in the next few months. And if you want a little bit of personal advising, you can always book a virtual meeting with us. Uh, our admissions team, our recruitment officers, uh, we're there to support you and we can do Zoom or phone calls. So if you visit our website, you can use our online booking system or you can shoot us an email uh, and we can always set one up through, uh, through that as well. So feel free to stay in touch going forward. Uh, Quinn and I will drop our emails in the chat so you guys can have them and you can stay connected after this evening uh, as well. And obviously follow us on social media. It's a really good way to stay connected on upcoming events, webinars, open house, uh, and just connecting with the current student uh, and Lakehead experience as well. So I think we're right on time here. Um, that's kind of it in terms of the formal portion of this evening. Um, I think I've got a few questions possibly coming into. The only one um, we could expand on is a question about, is it hard to get accepted into the criminology program? Um, and yeah. So, I, I, so, yeah, so Aaron um, already gave, I think, a, a pretty good answer as to what the um, expectations are of getting into Lakehead, period, and in, in particular in, in our program, which is um, those six courses and the, you know, the best six, the only requirement being that English course um, and, you know, having a 70% average, right, I think, across yep. the, the six in total, yeah. Yep. Um, the nice thing, so this was, I think, Jade's question. I hope, Jade, you're, uh, you're still uh, listening, um, but for anybody else as well. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is that our program is still growing, which means that, you know, if, if you get into Lakehead, uh, and you want to do criminology, it really shouldn't be hard to do criminology. It's not like our program is so overstuffed that we're now at a point of saying no to people who actually, you know, 
qualify for the program. Um, so if you qualify, I, I, I can't guarantee this. Um, things change from year to year, but um, we're not at this moment in a position of saying, you know, that we're, we're so full, we can't take another, you know, another student. So I think you're actually in pretty good shape. If you're excited to uh, join us here and you've got, you've got the, uh, the requirements to get in, then you should be able to get in. Thanks, Dr. Krupp. Yeah, it's uh, uh, always a tricky one for, for students. I know it's confusing sometimes when you, you know, see an admissions average for a university and you're unsure if it's, you know, if I have that average, do I get in or does it need to be higher or how does that work? Um, yeah, with the minimum overall average, we look at your top six, grade 12, URM courses, minimum 70 overall average. And if you're above that average, there's a very good uh, high likelihood you'll get into our, uh, our criminology program. And, and that goes across most of our programs at Lakehead as well. Um, being a smaller institution, we're definitely growing, as, as you mentioned, and uh, we have uh, availability for that program. So um, yeah, if you have admissions related questions, Quinn and I can always answer those going forward as well. But uh, like we said, grade 12U is the only prerequisite course for the program. So good, good question. Um, I don't see any questions sitting there for now, but maybe just to kind of uh, wrap up here, Dr. Krupp, if you have any kind of last uh, pieces of advice or anything you'd uh, kind of say to students that are maybe considering the criminology program, anything you'd like to maybe share with them? Yeah, I mean, so we're an enthusiastic bunch, uh, both at the faculty level and students, right? People are excited about, you know, this program and are excited about the content. The faculty uh, love teaching this stuff. Um, it's, it's exciting, right? It's actually interesting work. And so we really like um, sharing that kind of stuff with the students. Um, the the uh, student base is a really varied group of people, right? Uh, and so it's really neat. You get to meet all sorts of different people from all sorts of different walks of life uh, and learn all sorts of different kinds of things, which is really, really cool. And like I said, it helps you um, when you leave. There's a really good shot. You're going to get a job in an area that interests you doing something that you want to actually do. Um, so I know I lucked out um, and I know lots of other people have as well. Um, doing what they're doing, but I, I really love it here. The program is a fairly new program, right? We're, we're not all that old. Um, and so coming back to that question of Jade's, you know, there's a lot of room to grow still. Um, we've hired two new faculty in the last two years. That's a very big deal. Um, and we're hoping to keep doing that um, to get this program bigger and bigger and uh, more, not in the sense of lots of students, but in the sense of lots of faculty you know, to teach you um, this kind of stuff. Um, the nice thing is that that our campus is not that big, as Aaron pointed out. So student-wise, we can't grow forever, right? It's not a huge university where we're going to have tons and tons of um, space. And eventually, you know, there's going to be, like everywhere else, a handful of faculty and tons of students. Right now, it's a good ratio, and it's only going to get better, frankly, as we keep hiring faculty for the program. So, yeah, it's really great. We'd love to see you. <laughs> that's awesome. Thanks, Dr. Krupp. That's a really great session, super detailed. I appreciate you um, giving all the uh, in-depth info uh, to all my hard-hitting questions there <laughs> earlier. And I know it was a bit of a quiet uh, quiet group tonight, but uh, obviously you, you covered uh, everything very well. And, uh, and I'm sure we'll have some questions after uh, tonight uh, as we go forward and students kind of continue on their decision-making process. So um, if you do have questions for Dr. Krupp or uh, Quinn or I or any of our other uh, staff or faculty, you can always connect with us after tonight. Um, there'll be lots of other opportunities, including the virtual open house coming up to, uh, to get more information. So um, best of luck to everybody. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy evenings here tonight for the Discover uh, Criminology webinar. So we'll leave it there. Um, thanks again. And uh, hopefully we'll see some of you later on in the year, but next fall. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone.